ladies and gentlemen, we are here at the Terengganu Cultural Village and it is beautiful. It's a beautiful green space, a living area for the traditional houses, the traditional boats, the traditional way of living and uh, we're gonna show you some beautiful views from up and down here. It's, uh, we're going through the jungle right now. We're gonna see some traditional places where people used to live. Really, really imposing, really magnificent. Like they're big and tall and like a very intricate kind of design, wooden sculpture details. Completely love that. Long house. Long house. I love this kind of like now is the perfect weather to discover something like this. We're just walking around and um, there's so much greenery around and this is just reminds me of the traditional village in Romania in uh, Astra Museum where you could see like hundreds of types of houses, traditional ones and walk among them like a living open air museum and this one in Trenganu is uh, well <laughs> with palm trees <laughs> and uh, long houses beautiful let's see I'm very curious I want to explore all of this area and tell you more about the secrets and the legends around here oh man this Teranganu cultural village is amazing it kind of reminds me of the village museum back home in Romania in Sibiu and with the one in Bucharest because you have houses scattered everywhere you have a main building which is very impressive and it's very nice it's on stilts like back in the day it has water features you have also here some boats some ships lying around next to the shore and a lot of small houses scattered throughout this park very impressive and very nice people here as well Gigi I think she went and mingled a little bit more with the people me, I stayed back a while so that I can show you the images from above. So now it's time for me to go back to Gigi and find her and see what she's up to. Okay, dear friends, we have like behind me, you will see the Tengu Long Palace. Something that attracted my, my eyesight since I came here. And it was built in uh, 1904, 1904 by Chikhad an outstanding builder from Bahang, uh, helped by several other builders. So the original site of this palace is located about 30 meters from Sungai Besut in uh, Kampung Raja, in this Kampung where we're right now. Uh, this palace is a symbol of Tengu's long love for his wife, one of the royal family of Terengganu. I wouldn't be able to tell if it's like the right sound or not. Yeah. Good, good sound. Is the sound is good. So the guys are tuning their uh, tools here, their music instruments. I have never seen how the drums, drums, right? Uh, Call them drums? Yes, traditional. traditional. Do they have a name? Uh, Genda. Genda. In Malay, we say Genda. 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 Genda.
the traditional um, martial arts from here in Malaysia amazing amazing it looks like ballet and it's also a form of fight an art of fighting if I would say people are like the, the two boys they were so so tensed up and but the, it's fascinating it's so elegant an elegant way of fighting your enemy <laughs> that's very beautiful and um, accompanied by the music you get in a sort of a trance and uh, if you are carrying on with it and if you get even even more involved in the whole process then you might even use the traditional Malay uh, knife beautiful place beautiful Silat I would never have imagined myself being here in Kampung Budaya Terengganu just uh, experiences Silat for the first time with these beautiful people and the music and entertaining and like really a, a, a very I don't know very intense experience I would say <laughs> it's very beautiful hi what do you have here? Traditional Chris, the traditional Malay knife. Can you please show it to me? <laughs> it's a warrior's weapon, right? It's an old one. Pretty damaging. <laughs> wow, it's beautiful. So much work. And this is another one, another Chris. Wow, this is new. Oh, okay. Beautiful. People still use it. <laughs> okay, Sila. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Chris. Chris. Beautiful. And um, what moment of uh, of the Sila can you do? You realize you need the Chris. <laughs> Something like a cannibal, silat uh -huh. cannibal. Mm -hmm. uh, all the silat come mm -hmm. and uh, we we uh, we show our our silat. Uh, every Sunday, every mm -hmm. Saturday or Sunday we have a silat. So oh, silat. Saturday or Sunday. And today you also have silat. Beautiful. I mean, it's the first time I'm seeing silat. It's very uh, intense. Very intense. It's like an act of war, you know, a declaration of war. Beautiful. It's very, very beautiful. Thank you, my friend. What's your name? Uh, Ton Ani. Ton Ani. I'm Gigi. Nice to meet you. <laughs> and uh, Romania. Romania. Yeah. <laughs> so this is, in case you guys are interested in uh, purchasing um, one of these beautiful pieces of art, this is how you can find our friend here. <laughs> Thank you. Now to the cooking site, back. <laughs> Everything is getting ready. 
This is for the noodles, right? Yeah. For noodles. Ah, uh, my <laughs> Yes, hello, ladies. <laughs> Ini, ini yang lubang kecil, ini yang lubang besar. The more. Uh, this is for the big one. Uh, this is for the small one. Then they mix it together. If they love to have the big one, they put it the more inside here for the big laksa. Ini tekanan dia. Laksa, laksa terengganu. Do you like Valsa Terengganu? Yeah. Like <laughs> <He's> the, <laughs> of course. <laughs> He's the man who makes the Laksa Terengganu. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you When, know. Ah, uh, this is Laksa. Yeah. 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 You have some of them doing it like this. Yeah, ni lah. Yeah. Yang dikatakan apa ni yang yang memang and they mix with. Uh, I mean, we have to eat it with the uh, salad. We have lots of salad here. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Laksa Tunganu because it's a traditional way. Uh, it's our staple food for every day in the morning. We have it in the morning. In the morning before and now, now they are uh, having it at lunch times or dinner time. No, now the day they change all the menu to morning to afternoon or dinner. Okay. Yeah, the meat from rice. So the we we Asia right? Uh, our staple food from rice is any carbohydrate. Yes. Yeah. True. Yeah. Uh, what is your name, sir? My name? Yes. Yat. Yat. Yeah, Y-A-T. Y-A-T. Yeah. Okay. Yat, I'm yeah. Gigi. Nice to meet you. Okay, thank, thank, thank you. so much for the introduction. Thank, uh, thank you for coming to Kampung Budaya, <laughs> Terengganu. Thank you. Ini nak ke bawah ni. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, you have to nail these noodles. <laughs> He has to nail these noodles, guys. The other ones were a, little, a bit of a fail. Like he's a very patient guy. Yes, now it says slow, slow, I go slow, slow. <laughs> I don't want to upset this noodle maker as well. <laughs> One noodle maker, upset noodle maker is enough. Mrs. Tang, if you're seeing this, we're here for redemption. <laughs> Okay. Now you go there, you put your hands like this and put them down. The cooking show is starting now. Um, big thanks guys to MOMC, big thanks to beautiful Terengganu, the Terengganu tourism. Thanks to everyone who has been so kind to us and um, I'm very very thankful I'm here and being able to share this with you it's really fantastic. The thing I love most about this village is the fact that you can go inside every house and see experience actually how people used to live back in the day. Right? This is a single house with cable and in 1986 rebuilt at this present location walking around this whole village but the guys have been working this whole time under one of these historical houses so this is the office now an impromptu office there was a cooking set behind us are the the other houses like the way where we came in from pretty adventurous life as a person who wants to travel and wants to showcase all of their travels through YouTube, through videos. Pretty intense. <laughs> This first and then that. No, you must make a two round. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. Yes. I want to try the other one. Well, all the chefs here, um, they're really enjoying the current laksa. The cooking is finished. It was an intense process, but we learned a lot through it. I hope everybody's gonna enjoy it. If not, I'm gonna check out their reactions. <laughs> I agree. Thumbs up. Good laksa. Still, I prefer the one in Sarawak more, but that's just me. I don't know. That one had a bit more of a flavor bomb. This is the piece of my laksa. The first sauce. The mix of um, of sauce. It's pretty flavorful. It tastes like I don't know. It tastes like timber somehow. It's a very flavorful 
this tastes a bit like taste. Yeah, I don't know, like, yeah, I don't know, like what it, it's inside, but it's so it has like a fragrance almost, you know. It, if if you smell like fresh uh, a fresh Christmas tree, like cut timber, I have like the same the same taste in my mouth. Don't forget the spoon, because otherwise the YouTube like, police is gonna be angry. It's okay. Important is for the food to get in my mouth. Mm. Wow. <laughs> the beans are crunchy. The onion is crunchy. I love it because it's so simple and it's very, very fresh. And um, I could easily get used to it. The, the, the consistency of the pasta it seems like spaghetti almost. It's pretty tasty. Good job. There you have it, guys. Very good laksa. You're eating laksa? Oh, yes. Perfect. Is it yummy? The biggest, the youngest, biggest fan of laksa. <laughs> <laughs> Great job. He's very busy. I don't want to interrupt him. I'm sorry. Excuse me. Okay. We don't interrupt people who eat laksa right now. A few moments later. Here in the Tregano Museum, um, I was approached by Choi, a very yes. nice <laughs> traveler as well from Malaysia, from KO. Yes, yes, yes. Can you please tell us your YouTube channel? Uh, my YouTube is uh, Hinkley Choi. Hinkley Choi. He's Choi. a very loving traveler. He's been traveling for the past in the in 40 oh, countries I so far. Since yeah, 40 countries since 1992. Since 1992. Wow. 30 years back. 30 years back. I started my Europe trip. Uh, one month, uh, 13 countries. I travel Europe by Euro Rail. Euro Rail. The then in 2016, I backpack eight countries in one month. Eight countries in one month. Yes, you can <laughs> just Google Hinkley Choi. You can mm -hmm. see my website is there, my YouTube is there, everything. my Facebook channel, everything. Perfect. He's now going through a really crazy trip in Southeast Asia. So if you want to check it out, go to his channel. Happy to meet you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dudo. Thank you. We're at my favorite department, jewelry. <laughs> So we have here a lot of the jewelry worn by brides and uh, women of high status and um, even some of the men. Beautifully exhibited here. It's impressive. I love to watch jewelry, historical jewelry in museums because you find them to be so detailed and uh, you wonder all the time like how, what could they how did they do it? How did they use the tools back in the day to make something so, so beautiful? Like hundreds of years ago, you would have something like this, only the king, queen and the royal family would wear, and uh, the women of high status. And you just wonder, how was it back then? Wow. Oh my goodness, I feel like a princess in a palace. Just look at this beauty. Wow. So beautiful. This is the royal family. Beautiful pictures. Historical pictures as well. Wow, this is so beautiful. Gold crest. My goodness, the rubies, gorgeous. Wow, just look at this one. One Chris. Wow. Oh my goodness, it's gorgeous. I don't know if you heard about the Chris. The Chris is um, something we saw earlier in the village being sold. Um, this is a very important religious and uh, warfare um, kind of blade. It's very intricately done. It requires a lot of effort and it's deadly. So people who are using this were investing a lot of time and a lot of uh, finance in order to have something like this. It was a high symbol of a status of a warrior and uh, the damage it could do to the enemy was 
extreme. <laughs> After the Terengganu Museum, we arrived here at the um, uh, ICT, I think it's called. It's a very popular place here in Terengganu on the side of the sea. Here you will find all the things fried, from fish to nuggets to chicken, from uh, meat, like, I don't know, any kind of meat, meatballs, um, crab, all sorts full fish, fried fish, uh, parts of fish. Like, you will find everything here. People love it. There are so many people already here. Even Joe is, I think it's four, 20 minutes to four in the afternoon. There are so many people here queuing up to get the best fried food in all of Terengganu. <laughs> Now that I'm here, I want to say something that really goes to my heart. A shout out to all the ladies working in the kitchens all over Malaysia. And because they're always super hard working, their hands move so fast. They're like little ants, like little bees in all the kitchens. Just to feed all the people, feel hungry, want to enjoy their food. They're working so, so hard to make all this delicious food and to bring it to the table. This is why Malaysian um, cuisine is so popular all over the world because of these very hardworking ladies. We got some uh, sotong, maybe the one I captured in a previous video. Some udang. Or maybe not. Some mushroom. And they have mm. fish as well. Everything is fried in butter. People love this place. Sotong is amazing. It's See if we're gonna love it as well. You like the sotong? Yes. Udang is following next. Mm. And the sauce is pretty good as well. Mm -hmm. I think I just found my favorite laksa. Spicy, fishy, amazing. Here at ITC. ICT. ICT. ICT, ITC, ICU, you see me eating the laksa in front of me. And mm. freeze trying as well. And very good. And full of chili. Ooh, very good. Amazing. I think you like food that makes you suffer, Michael. Mm. <laughs> yeah, maybe. I don't know. But it's amazing. It's very good, very tasty, very jiggly, wiggly, wiggly. Mm. I'm sorry, Sarawak. Oh my. You were number one. <laughs> now you're number two. And guess what we're having dinner? <laughs> on the drawbridge because reasons and why not this is how you finish the video you guys on the drawbridge having dinner in Tarangano this is really really amazing guys so happy to be here to see the drawbridge for the first time here in Tarangano going 45 degrees yes. traffic is stopped everywhere police traffic is and working only for us. the control room is over here and our friend Kamaru is helping us filming this moment. Yay. So we're grateful. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. This is a nice bridge. And now it's going back down. Up down. Back down. Yeah. Really, really Very. From 45 degrees, it can go up to 75 Seven. degrees. Uh, now it's going down. Down. Really the ships can pass through it. The ships but can we pass. cannot. <laughs> yeah. Go there. But you cannot because there's a bridge. There's a line of cars out there. There's a line of cars on the other side. People just waiting are waiting for patiently. The... Just Thank waiting for the bridge to come with a level. And um, no, this is something really unique. I had no idea we're gonna experience more. <laughs> Thank you, Kamran. Yeah. Thank you. Welcome here. Let's go.
you in the next one. Bye-bye. <laughs>